Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this tutorial we're going to be tying the Waltz Worm Blowtorch. Stay tuned. Here's a sneak peek at an original waltz worm, and I definitely mean the word original. I'll talk a little bit more about this one during the discussion of this video. Now let's get this one out of the vise, and let's take a look at one of its variations, the blowtorch. And now here's a look at our finished waltz worm blowtorch. A little bit of a difference between the original and this current variation. But now let's get a clean hook in the vise and start tying this one. Let's start tying this one. In my Stonfo Transformer vise, I have a Honic Competition hook. It's their H450BL. The BL designation stands for barbless. This is their Jig Superb hook. It's got a very wide gap. I'm tying this one in a size 14 today, though I will tie this anywhere between sizes 10 the whole way down to a size 18. The bead is a 3mm silver slotted from Hazard Fly Fishing. I'm going with the 3 because I tend to fish this fly in a little bit more, let's say rougher water, a little bit more aggressive water, uh, definitely whenever it's off color as well. The first thing we're going to add is a little bit of lead wire, some 010, around 4 or 5 turns of that. We're just going to slam it up against the bead. We're going to immediately go to our thread. I'm going to be using uni thread. This is 6 aught. This is that fluorescent fire orange. I'm going to shove that thread right up against that wire. Go down a little bit. Cut off our thread. And we'll go back and we're just going to cover our wire. Don't get too aggressive with your thread wraps when you're using 6 aught because this 6 aught can definitely build up in a hurry. So keep that in mind. Let's get our wire out of there. So a little bit poking through there, but we're going to be covering that with dubbing. We're going to get back to about where we would have a barb, and this is where we're going to add in our tag. And for our tag, we're going to be using Globrite yarn, or Globrite thread. It's going to be color number five is the one I'm using, and what I did for this, I just prepped three pieces. So I just cut three pieces of this right from the spool. We're going to lock it in place. And that's really all we have to do for this. Uh, for this part of the fly anyway, for this tag. I'm going to trim this off and I want to trim it really close so that it's almost going to help me with my with my taper. Now that I'm ready to kind of finalize, and when I say finalize, there's really not much more to, to add. I'm going to add some ribbing. It's going to be some Uni French small silver ribbing. Again, I'm going to put that really close. The tie-in point is going to be about where my lead wire let off. I'm going to wrap back. And at that point, now I'm going to start my dubbing. For the dubbing, I'm going to be using some hair's ear uh, dubbing. This is by Hairline. The color is going to be tan. I'm going to grab a nice clump. I'm going to create a little noodle. And I do want to really just sparsely dub this. So I don't need to get too much on there. I am going to work a nice little taper as I move up towards the front of the flyer, towards the thorax. If there's a little bit of this orange thread showing through the dubbing, that is not a bad thing. Okay, let's see if we got enough there. There we go. We're going to finish the thorax. I'm going to counter rib with my wire. And I pull it really tight down towards that slot. Let's get a few wraps over it. And if you're sure that you have this locked in place, you can just helicopter it away. The nice thing about 6 aught, we can create a little hot spot with this orange directly behind the bead, but that 6 aught is going to build up in a hurry. So get it close, and then when you go into your whip finish, that's going to finish building it the rest of the way. I'm just going to do a four turn first. Add just a little bit of Sally Hansen. 
So our head cement. Let's get a few more turns in there. And there we go. We'll trim away our thread. Let's come back to our tag. I'm just going to extend this a little bit. Go to around the, the bend of the hook. Go a little bit in, so I'm just out from that bend. And there we go. We have our finished Waltz Worm Blow Torch. If you want to take your dubbing brush, pick that out. By all means, you can do so. However, I like to keep mine kind of in this slender profile, if you want to call that slender, uh, just because I want it to get to the bottom in a hurry. That big bead is definitely going to help us do that. We have a little bit of wire underneath and we have our uh, silver ribbing. So there's a lot of things on this fly that's going to help it get down in a hurry. But let's change the camera angle and talk a little bit more about this pattern. That's all there is to the Waltz Warm Blow Torch. Before we talk about this pattern, let's take a step back and talk a little bit about the Waltz Warm originator, Mr. Walter Young. Walt is just one of those incredible individuals. He used to be an editor. He still writes for the Altoona Mirror. Look up some of his work online. He's an avid tire, fly fisherman. He's an outdoorsman. And I had the pleasure to meet him at the 2017 International Fly Tying Symposium. He was an absolute character. We were together for the Meet the Blogger panel, and he also sat kind of behind the curtain from me where I tied. I could hear him telling stories, laughing, just having a great time. We really connected, and at one point, I left my booth to walk around and talk to some others, and when I got back, I look in my vise, and lo and behold, there's the Waltz Worm, the one that you saw at the beginning of this video. Walt had come over to tell a story or make fun of me or something, and he decided to pull a prank on me and tie a Waltz Worm and leave it in my vise. Well, the prank was on him because I absolutely cherish that fly. It will never see the, wa the water at all. So Walt, thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting you. I hope we have a chance to hang out again. And if you ever can get a chance to come on my show, we would love to watch you tie the original Waltz Worm. Now let's talk a little bit about that waltz worm and all the variations because for starters, what does it represent? A caddis larva, sure. Crane fly larva, sure. Could you tie it smaller like a midge? Absolutely. I know fish just tend to love this fly and there are so many variations of it. We have a really popular one being used right now called the sexy waltz. Tim Flagler came out with a video of what he called to be the last waltz, basically the last waltz worm variation, but we all know that there's going to be so many more of these over the years. For this blowtorch, we call this a tag nymph because we have a hotspot tag coming out of that rear or right where the tail would be. Now, do all tag nymphs just have a hot spot that doesn't represent anything? Maybe, maybe not. I've seen a lot of these tag style nymphs that are fluorescent green, which represent an egg sac for caddis flies. So keep that in mind. In this case, that color that you're seeing for our blowtorch, it's just there to capture the fish's attention. I love to tight line nymph with these patterns. I love to fish them in faster moving water, sometimes a little off color. And I love that there's that really hot pink or hot orange color that just kind of grabs the fish's attention and makes them think, geez, what is this? And boy, do they like this one. Now, the original one works. I tied a waltz worm variation a few years ago. I'll put a link to it down below in the description. That one works. The sexy waltz works. The last waltz works. There are so many variations out there. By all means, try them all, have fun with them, and continue to push the boundaries and see what else, see what other variations are there. If you have any variations you'd like to share, you can kind of mention them down below in the description of this video. You can email them to me at tkamisa at gmail.com. If you'd like, I'd be happy to share them out via Facebook or Instagram, or we can just keep it as our secret, and I'd be happy to do so. But by all means, experiment, have fun with it, see what other materials you can find that will work for that blowtorch style, for that tag style of a nymph, and, and see if the fish like it, because more than likely, they're going to, because that original waltz worm has caught so many fish for so many fly fishermen over the years, and I know these variations are gonna work for you, too. Well, with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial on the waltz worm blowtorch. If you'd like to watch more of these, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I have a Facebook and an Instagram account, both under the Trout and Feather heading, and I'd love it if you could join those as well. On my website, I now have an email sign up, so if you go down there, enter your email, I'll send out about a monthly email just talking about what's going on with my videos, anything new, any tying events, so on and so forth. Well, once again, thank you everybody so much for watching this video. Thank you, Walt, for coming up with just an incredible winner, and I'll see all of you next time.
Bye.